Well, I recall that Clemson just knocked us all over the field. They were a very, very good football team. And uh, they went up and down the field, and we were able to hang on somehow or another. The, the most interesting part is the quarterback was Homer Jordan, which was dating my assistant at the time. So we had our own personal battle. <laughs> we had those guys pretty much every year. And uh, they come to play Georgia. They were very physical. They were big. Uh, just a very physical football team. We were not a good offensive team that day. We, uh, we drove the ball, we just couldn't score. 25 plus minutes, you know, on the field uh, defensively during the uh, first half. I mean, we literally were on the field, I believe it was right at, I may be wrong, 24, 25 minutes, and our offense was on the field five minutes and something. It was Scott Warner who uh, made the big plays. Scott Warner saved our butt. Uh, he just played as as you know what off, you know, there was a saying that, that Irk Russell made famous there, G-A-T-A, -A, and that's what, exactly what Scott Warner did that day. He saved us. I catch the punt and I can hear all these hits going on around me and this guys are blocking, Bob Kelly, Mike Fisher, and Dale Williams, have taken on the first three guys down. Catch the punt and run, run past these guys and there's nobody else. It's, it's, it's open, uh, wide open field. They'd all run by the, by the play and those three guys have made uh, three great, three great blocks. If you watch it on film, those guys stoned their players. Just Irk set up that punt return where we had a little triangle that was formed in front of Scott and I was the middle guy and unfortunately I, me being in the middle I had to take the lead guy typically coming down to tackle Scott and uh, I got a lot of practice uh, with Matt Hudson on our punt team in practice would just kill me. So uh, anyway, when they sent a receiver down, as I remember, uh, he was a piece of cake compared to Nat, and I, I got a little chip on him, and Scott could always, I could always count on him, and he always did make that first guy miss, and once he got through, he had great speed and, and just strength for a punt returner. You guys are reaching out, trying to grab as I'm going by, and then I have a punter, you know, punters and kickers. Everybody hates punters and kickers. They're just, they're punters and kickers. Uh, and if it, you get tackled by a kicker, it's embarrassing. I roll into the end zone, and and uh, I don't know where the roll seven thing came from, but I'd seen somebody do it in in, uh, in practice, and I thought, well, I'll just try it and see how it goes. And drop to a knee and shake it and roll it, and I get to the sidelines, and Coach Dooley said, that's a nice punt return, but don't ever do that again. And I said, yes, sir. And so I stopped at that. I remember that uh, you couldn't wait for Clemson to punt because you knew that Scott Warner was something special back then. I just remember Scott Warner saved us. He uh, picked off that pass as they were going in for a score. The interception was just one of those plays that you dream about and, 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 and uh, you see it happen long before it ever happens. I was supposed to cover the tight end, the tight end blocks, I'm free and I'm reading the quarterback's eyes and uh, Homer's rolling the wrong way. He never sees me coming from the backside. And he throws it right to me. He thinks he's throwing it to his guy and he throws it right to me. And Chris Welton lays a nice block down uh, and, and springs me around the corner and then it's just a foot race. And I die. I'm, I'm sprinting down the sidelines and my legs are getting heavier and heavier and heavier. I kind of gave him a hard time. He let somebody catch him from behind. So I basically told him he was as slow as I was. It was all I could do to get up off the field uh, after that, that return. I was absolutely exhausted. I could not get up. People are jumping on me and beating on me, and all I want to do is breathe. And my legs are just, they're, they're just, they're just they won't work. They just won't work. But uh, God, what a fun time. You don't like to say he single-handedly won it, but, but he sure did make sure we had enough points to, to win the game. It was astounding. I mean, he took. It was like he took over the game. He was like, um, you know, play. The, the, he was one of those few players. Herschel was another one who literally took over a game. There's no doubt that Scott did have a great game, but I, I, I like to remind people. I think the score was 20 to 16, and uh, I had two field goals, so that really was the difference in the game. <laughs> a lot of people don't realize Scott didn't start that game. Scott had graded so poorly against um, Texas A&M, and Scott hadn't particularly made any mistakes. It was just Bill, as I said, Bill w was so demanding, and and it, it didn't quite fit Scott's mold and mindset. He was so athletic and so good 
But from a fundamental standpoint, you know, his fundamentals probably as we all look back and we used to kid him about it. Nothing I'm saying here that he wouldn't know. You know, the word. He, just, he played the game a little bit different because he could, because he could make up a lot of ground where, you know, the rest of us had to fundamentally be sound or, you know, we were going to get beat bad. Scott, as Scott is, uh, you know, he can make big plays. He takes chances and sometimes you get burnt, but most, most often than not with him, he ended up on the, on the winning end of, the, of most of those risks and he was a tremendous athlete. I think Coach Dooley went to Coach Lewis and, and said, uh, let's not worry so much about grades with Scott anymore. Let's, I mean, coach him the way you've been coaching him, but uh, he's going to be on the field all the time.